Okay, we have to determine on which plane sparkling will occur. Okay, so this is based on. identification okay. this is based on the identification of the lower second moment of area okay. so we know buckling And occur, okay, occur uh, on the, so there are two planes it can occur. It can either occur on the, so for this case, it can either occur on the YZ plane or it can occur on the XZ what plane. So either plane. So, but we have to determine, and the determination is based on the uh, lower second moment of area. Okay. So buckling can occur uh, on can occur on either the YZ plane or on the exact plane. Okay, so we have to find out. Okay, so we have to find. Out. So by finding out, we are going to sketch the cross section view. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the cross section view of our structure. So, uh, hold on. So there is D and 3D. Hold on. And do. Okay, so I'm going to follow our transformation. So this is our XX. So if I draw there, so this is my. X. Y. And this is our rotation about Z. Okay, so we know that this is B. And then the other one, sorry, D. And the other one, the other direction over here. This is 3D. Okay, so we're going we're going to deal about XX. So now we are going to deal with XX. So this is XX, right? So to calculate IXX. So if XX is of interest, this will be our width. Over here. This will be our depth. Okay, so let me check. I got everything correct. Yep, it's correct. So from here, you know that IXX. So the width is D. The depth is 3D cube over 12. Okay, so this will work out to be so 3 power of 3 is 27. Uh, D4 over 12. So this is equal to uh, 27 over 12. It is equal to 9 over 4. D4. Okay. Then I'm going to do directly on the side over here. We are going to find. Now we are going to focus on YY. Okay. So this is YY parallel to the axis of interest. It's going to be the width. 
perpendicular orientation on the axis of interest, which is why y is going to be depth. So now we determine i y y is equal to the width, which is equal to 3D, multiplied by the depth, which is D cubed over 12. So this will become D4 over 12. So what does this mean? So buckling will occur about the y-axis. Okay, will occur about the y-axis. So what does it mean? Okay. So now you look over here. Okay, so buckling. Okay, I'm going to copy this whole thing so uh, I can draw more. I'm going to. I think it should be detail four over four. Say it again. I think it should be detail four over four. Yeah, right. I, 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 I. Yeah, you get a pile of beer. Yeah, and just a question on the test. Do we have to like you can tell from the picture it's gonna buckle about I, Y, Y because it's uh, closer to the centroid. Like, do, yes. we do we have to? Show that by calculation, or if we yes, figure it. because okay. it's it's not always so straightforward. This one is straightforward. What if the geometry is not so straightforward, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So buckling. So now buckling will occur about the y-axis. So about the y-axis means the radius of curvature. Okay, what it means means the radius of curvature will follow this orientation. You can you all can see. So this is drawn about the y axis. Yes. OK, so buckling will occur on the x, y, x, z plane. OK, so the buckling will occur on this plane over here, which is our x, z plane. Let me elaborate. OK, let me elaborate. So I'm going to draw x, z plane now. Okay, I'm going to draw exact plane now. Uh, hold on. This is not a very good drawing. So now this is my exact plane. Okay, so this is our exact plane. Okay, so if buckling were to occur after we discovered that uh, the I YY is lower, right? So buckling will occur in this direction. Okay, buckling will occur in this direction. Okay, so it's a single flat plane, the, the plane boundaries is the red box that not a box but a four sided shape that I've drawn. So this is your exact plane. Okay. So now you know, right? And this is based on the lower what? This is based on the lower second moment of area, right? It will not occur about the x-axis direction okay. so the 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 buckling will occur about the y-axis first is a weaker uh weaker orientation okay based on the geometry okay so now we we have identified that we are going to focus on i y y
uh, is equal to B4 over 4. Now, what is the purpose of doing this? Okay. We, we, whenever we do anything, we have to we have to like hold back. Hey, why are we doing this for? Right. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to determine our L over our ratio. We want to determine our uh, radius of uh, gyration because later on we we need to use the radius of gyration in a formula which I will I will show you later. Maybe I will I will show show you now okay so we are going to use it based on later on we're going to apply this formula over here and we need our what l over r as you can see over there okay so now we are going to find our uh, radius of gyration so we know that i y y is equal to a r squared Okay, in fact, this is a radius direction, radius of direction of along the y-axis. Okay, so Ry is equal to square root of Iyy over A. So this will be equal to the square root. So Iyy is D4 over 4. And then the area is equal to what? Uh, 3D, 3D times D. Okay. So we know that this you can cancel off. This will become squared. Okay. So the 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 ratio over here. So it's D over square root twelve. Okay. So D over square root twelve. So one. Divide by square root 12 is 0 0.2887. Okay, so 0 0.2887. D. Okay, so now we found our right. So now we're going to test on two conditions now. Okay, we're going to test on two conditions. And I'll tell you why two conditions. So again, I'm going to get this graph over. So we are going to test two conditions. Why we have to test two conditions over here? Because for this case, we don't know. Okay, for this case, we don't know the actual dimension of our D. We don't know what they are. Okay, so we have to test it out. Okay, we have we have to we have to test on both condition. Okay, which I'll show you the procedure to determine the d value. Then we have to again test is is this value valid or not? Okay, so let, let me show you what I mean later on. Okay, so we're gonna test on two uh, condition. So condition number one. Okay, condition number one is where L over R is less than 133.68. Okay, less than 133.68. So we are going to test why 133.68. This is 133.68. So what when you use this condition where L over R is less than uh, 133.68, then we know that our stress critical, okay, we know that our stress critical will be equal to, so if you go back to A to B, it's 0 0.658, okay, 0 0.658, okay, 0 0.658, then to the power of, uh, stress yield 
divide by stress E, close bracket, multiply by stress U. Okay, we have to use this condition. 